There was one real leader of the Islanders, and that was Al Arbor. And there were a lot of reasons for that. I mean, he was, he was a man that did not want to listen to compromise. He was a man that was tough on us. He was a man that did smile a lot. But in our own way, we respected him so much, it almost became like, you know, we love this guy, but not at that time. It was more like a teenager with his dad, right? But Al Arbor was really a guy who we knew, and that's very important, we knew that he put in more hours in preparing us for the games than we did. And I think he got a lot of respect from all of us. He knew every single button to push on every single player on that team. I mean, he knew how to get Dennis Poffin riled up so he would go out there and play twice as good as he did in the first period. For me, he would walk, he would come in if I had a bad period, he'd walk by me and just, just look at me, just, you know, give me that scowl and just, just shake his head, you know. So you knew that you, you played kind of bad in that, during that period and you better pick it up in the third. But that was his biggest attribute, and I think, uh, and I think he worked at it. And I think he knew how to get every player on that team uh, motivated, and how to get the best out of every guy. That's why I learned how to play hockey, Mr. Al Arbor. Uh, I remember for probably three weeks, they used to call it a Jew drawing practice. They were going to teach me how to play hockey, and they did that. Al Arbor was a tremendous, great coach. He was, he knew his game, he was prepared for it. He knew how to utilize his player. I mean, he was, uh, he taught me how to play hockey. I remember one day he wasn't happy with the way we were playing. Um, the team was built to be a big, strong team that could play a little finesse and the team at that time was playing too much finesse for him. So one day at a morning state, Al walked in with a platter of 24 eggs. And in those days, hockey pants used to have a pocket in the back. And so everybody's coming in off the ice. Clark Gillies was there, he was the captain at the time, and eggs were being put in your stalls. And we all come in off the ice and see Al with these eggs, and what is he doing? What is going on? He calmed everybody down, he said, sit down for a moment. You see that egg I put in your stall? I want every one of you tonight for the game, put it in your pocket. We're looking at him, why would we want to put it in our pocket? He said, because none of you would ever break the egg because nobody hits anybody anymore. He walked out of the room. One day in his first year of coaching, uh, he said, I want to talk to you after practice today. So all during practice, I'm, you know, you, you, you worry about what he's going to tell you. So I, I go in his office, and Al had these big, glasses, these big eyes, and he, he said this, and I've never forgotten that, if I can't get 80 minutes a week where you're on the ice and you're using your head, whether you have the puck or not, you will be out of here so fast that you won't believe it. Now, do you have any questions? And I said, no, it's pretty clear to me. <laughs> you know, Al was just a competitor. I mean, he... He loved his players, he loved the game. Uh, he was born to be a coach. Al was uh, like a father to me when I came to the league because you know I was a 19-year-old kid coming from a different country. And I always remember Al uh, because he, always, he was always worried about my weight, so he always brought scales to uh, any road trip. And I remember one night I went to Brighton Beach, which was in Brooklyn, and I came uh, next morning I came to a practice that was 10 pounds overweight. And Al was really uh, shocked. He asked me what I did all night. Well, I drink vodka and borscht, basically. He, he, he was thinking that way. So I remember Al, Al Arbo always gave me a tough time with my weight, but he was a great guy. Anytime I had a bad game, I remember, you know, he would give you a tough time, but next morning he'd come up to you and, uh, you know, be your friend again. So uh, I had only warm memories about that coach. I don't know if there's any player in the NHL that can say they've had the same coach for 13 consecutive years as I had. So obviously Al and I had this kind of relationship where he knew exactly where I was, if my game, at what level my game was, and if it wasn't at the level that he expected every night, he was on me trying to find out why. He was a great coach, a great mentor, and he really was the leader of all those teams and, you know, building up to the Stanley Cup and then finally winning them. Get out of there.